5 to 11 servings of bread, cereal, or rice. What? 3 to 5 of vegetables and 4 of fruits. Is best. Their antioxidants and fiber help you to digest. If you think about how many pathogens there would be around us, how many bacteria that could be harmful or protozoa or viruses, it would be quite a few. So this might be a bacteria, this might be a protozoa, this might be a virus, this might be a fungi. And you'd find them all over the place, so all around us. Now, what? How can we make sure that they don't always invade our body? That they aren't getting to our tissue and to our blood at every sec single second? Because I mean, they'd be around us every single second. And what that help? I and mean, the first thing that helps us prevent this from happening is called the first line defense. Now, you can kind of consider the first line of defense to be just a barrier. It's a, it's a barrier that makes sure that the bad stuff stays out. And once they penetrate the first line of fence, then the, the cops come activated and we have a second line of fence. Right? The first line of fence is just a barrier to make sure that things don't get into our tissues, so that they don't get into our tissues, which are our cells, and into our blood. So they're meant to stay out of our tissues and blood, and once they get in, once they actually do manage, then we have the second and third line of fence being activated. Now the first line of fence is actually non-specific. What that means is it doesn't, doesn't target a specific type. It doesn't target a specific type. It just generally doesn't, doesn't let stuff in. For example, the skin is a example of the first line of defense. It will just not let anything in. It's not specific in what it does in its action. It just lets nothing in. So that's non-specific. It doesn't specifically target anything. And first line of defense mechanisms are all non-specific. The reason why I'm mentioning this is because Dot Point itself says identify defense barriers to prevent entry of pathogens in humans, including the skin, the mucous membrane, the cilia, the chemical barriers, and other body of secretions. So we're going to quickly talk about those five things and how they help us prevent pathogens from getting into our body, especially into our tissue and into our blood. Uh, first one, the first one is relatively straightforward. It's the human skin. There's actually three things that help human skin protect us from infection. The first one is dead cells. Most of the, all of the cells you see on your skin, the visible ones, are actually dead. So they're actually dead. But that gives it a big barrier because things can't penetrate. So they can't, they can't invade dead cells because they're dead. So a bacteria can't invade or a virus can't invade dead cells because they're dead. Plus, it just, it's so thick that it's hard to penetrate. It's hard to penetrate. It's kind of like a wall. It's just like a massive wall and nothing gets in. So that's the first part of how the human skin helps us prevent pathogens from getting in. Now there's actually all good bacteria. So there's actually quite a few good bacteria which have made its nest on the top of the skin and they'll feed off the scraps that the skin leaves. Now the good bacteria, they actually produce a chemical. First of all, they take away space. So they take away space from the bad bacteria. So the bad bacteria can't can't anchor on the skin because the good bacteria are already there, so they take away space. But they also produce a chemical. So they produce a toxin, which doesn't harm us, but this toxin kills the bad bacteria. That's why I'm saying good bacteria, there are actually lots of good bacteria. We don't want to classify all bacteria as bad bacteria. There's good bacteria and then there's the pathogenic bacteria. And these good bacteria help us protect against the bad bacteria by producing this toxin and taking away space for them to bind on our skin. Now we also have sweat glands, so sweat glands would be roughly somewhere here, uh, these ones. They are on our skin and what they produce is they produce an oily substance and that oily substance can actually also be a toxin, so the oily substance can act as a toxin and by doing so it will actually kill the pathogens as well, especially bacteria. These are three ways that our human skin can help us defend against, be the first line of defense against pathogens. It can be hard to penetrate, so it's going to be a thick layer of dead cells. It has good bacteria, which take away space for landing of bad bacteria, plus they produce toxins which kill the bad bacteria. And we also have these sweat glands which produce oil, and that oil is also toxic to bad bacteria. That's the first one, it's the human skin. The second one is the mucous membrane. So the mucous membrane, what they do is they line the digestive, digestive, the respiratory tract, 
mainly the digestive and respiratory tract. So these would be, the, for example, respiratory is you know, our lungs and, and uh, our trachea. And digestive is obviously small intestine, large intestine, and the food pipe. And these are places where we have a lot of contact with pathogens, right? We breathe in pathogens. We might have pathogens in our food. So we want to have somewhere that we can prevent them from really getting far. And what you can imagine, we've got, let's say these, these yellow things are maybe our viruses, these bigger things, maybe a couple of bad bacteria. And these membranes here, so these are our mucous membranes, the ones I'm, I'm point, pointing to right now. And what they produce, as the name suggests, they produce mucus. So this white, this is not white, this um, blue stuff I drew with the mucus membrane. Uh, mucus sort of saliva, so that's, that's what they produce. They produce this mucus stuff, which is just that yicky stuff, which gets things to be stuck on them. Right? And beneath the mucous membrane are our actual tissues. These are the tissues that they should protect. We don't want to have anything invading these tissues. So beneath the mucous membrane are all these tissues which they need to protect. So if, for example, you know, the virus tries to get in or the bacteria tries to sort of anchor on, and anchoring, by, by what I mean by anchoring is just actually being there and putting down its anchor so it doesn't move. Because you can imagine, like, if you're in the digestive tract, things move really fast, so you need to actually anchor in to make sure you don't fall away as well. And the thing is, the mucous membrane, what it does, it washes away, so it makes them all stick, so they can't actually get in. And it also, so the first thing, I said pathogens get stuck. So if they get stuck, they can't really get penetrated into the tissue because they get stuck in this membrane, this gooey membrane, as gooey mucus. And also there's chemical release by the mucous membrane that prevent the anchoring. So these bacteria can't anchor, which means they can't actually attach, and that's what they have to do, they have to attach, otherwise they'll be washed away. So these two are ways that our mucous membrane makes sure that certain bacteria or and viruses can't invade our digestive tract and our respiratory tract. And those are specifically important because that's basically where we have lots of pathogen contact through the air and through the food. Now, cilia is also one need to know. Cilia are just hair. So they're found on the surface of the respiratory tract. Remember, these are our lungs and our trachea. So this is, for example, our lungs here, our trachea here. And these are just small hairs. You can see this is how they look like under the microscope. They're just lots of small hair. And this is our membrane. So these small things here are our mucous membrane. So M for mucous membrane. And these bigger things are our cilia. So C for cilia. And what you can imagine is we have these mucous membranes producing the mucus, which means stuff gets stuck. And then we have, inside obviously we have all these stuck bacteria and everything else swimming in it. And what these hair do, the hair move the debris. So they move all the dead bacteria and everything else. And also important, they move it, but they only move it upwards. So you, if, for example, let's say, you know, you've breathed in stuff and it goes down to your, towards your lungs, you don't want to go get those bacteria down towards your lungs. You want to get them back up to outside the body. So these hair will constantly push all the stuff up. So you're going to have all the bacteria moving back up from where they came from. And once it gets it all the way up, once it gets to roughly the upper throat part, that's when you might start coughing or when you might start um, sneezing because you've gotten all the bacteria so far up that you can remove them from your body. So what cilia do is cilia help you to, once you know all the things have gotten stuck, all the pathogens have gotten stuck, they help you move them upwards and out of your body. So that's what cilia do. And they're found in the respiratory tract, so at your lungs and at your trachea. Now we also have chemical barriers, and by the chemical barriers I just mean we have you know, certain chemicals that our body uses to try to kill off pathogens. Now the easiest example of this would be our stomach. Now the pH of a stomach is actually quite low, so it says pH of 1 to 3 in our stomach, that's due to stomach acid. So the, one of the chemical barriers would be stomach acid, which can be found in the stomach, which makes the stomach acidic. Now remember when it comes to denaturing of enzymes, bacteria, like all different organisms, they have an ideal pH. So their ideal pH might be, let's say, might be 7. If they get in the stomach, that means they become denatured. Their enzymes die, which means the actual bacteria dies. So that by having a low pH, that just means we have one another way of killing off pathogens before they get into our tissues, before they get into our blood. 
So remember, we're going to absorb in the small intestine. That's where we're going to have all the stuff being absorbed into our blood. So we want to make sure that pathogens are dead before they get into our blood. Now, if they manage to get through this, the small intestine, maybe their pH, ideal pH might be lower. It might be 3, who knows. But then they have to also go into the small intestine after the stomach. And the small intestine is slightly basic, so it has a pH of around about 8. So even if it manages to survive the low pH, then it has to put into a pretty high pH, which means, again, it's unlikely to survive both the low and the high pH, which means ultimately it will die. Well, in most cases, many of them will die unless they're adapted towards these crazy fluctuations. So here we have um, the basic solution in our intestine and the acidic solution in our stomach, which help us prevent pathogens from entering. And these are all examples of chemicals because chemicals have made it acidic or basic. Now, we also have an acidic environment in the urethra, which is close to our sexual organs. So that's where our urine goes in and out. And all that's also to help to make sure that stuff doesn't creep up our ure urethra, because they can't creep up because there's a sick environment which will kill them if they try to get into our body from that way. They're basically, we're basically trying to protect all holes we have because that's where stuff can come in. Now we've covered all but the last, the body secretions as well, we need to cover those. And two body secretions you can remember quite easily is sweat and urine. Sweat has something antimicrobial, it's antimicrobial, which means it's something inside sweat which will actually kill microbes, including pathogens. And urine is slightly acidic. And again, whenever we urinate, we actually kill anything that we can find on the way that flushes it out. So these are two bodily secretions that help us kill off pathogens as well. Again, all these were non-specific, so they don't target anything specific. They just target whatever they can kill. I'll go for the ones again. You've got human skin. That's just a bunch of dead cells. Which are hard, and that makes them hard to penetrate. They also have good bacteria on it, which takes away space from the bad bacteria, and they also produce toxins to kill off the bad bacteria. We've got the sweat glands on the skin as well, which produce oil, and that oil is toxic to actual bacteria, especially the bad bacteria. We have the mucous membrane, which lines the digestive and the respiratory tract. So this is really useful because it produces this mucus, which makes things stuck. And then make sure that, that the actual viruses and bacteria can't get to our tissues because they get stuck beforehand. And also releases these chemicals that prevent the bacteria from anchoring. They have to anchor to make sure they don't get washed away. And this is not the case because these, these mucous membranes produce their chemicals, so they can't anchor. For the cilia as well. The cilia are just this hair close to the membrane. And what they do is they move the debris. And the good thing is they move it upwards. They're found on the respiratory tract. So if we breathe in pathogens, it will make sure that the pathogens go back up and out the body. And we've got the chemical barriers. This is to do with chemicals being a first line defense. Examples would be the stomach acid, small intestine, and the sick environment of the urethra. And usually chemicals will change the pH, which make, make sure that bacteria will become denatured, and or fungi or whatever else it would be, and they can't penetrate. Exception, it doesn't work that well against viruses because viruses are non-living, but it works well against fungi, protozoa, or bacteria. We've got the sweat and the urine as well. And these are our bodily secretions, the last one, bodily secretions. And what they do is they, the urine is slightly acidic, which means when we urinate, we flush out any bad things. And the sweat is antimicrobial, so it will kill microbes, including pathogens, when it comes in contact with them. But yeah, I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.